Good morning. Happy Lord's Day to you. I pray that you're doing well today. It's Sunday morning. And right before I do my ministers and training class, which starts at 8 a.m., I want to speak to you uh, to follow up, if you will, about something that I talked to you about uh, in our last offering uh, and, uh, that we have uh, given concerning the NAACP blacks and abortion. I said in the previous release that this is not a Democrat issue and it's not a Republican issue. And that is, while that is true, it's not entirely true because although I am a registered non-affiliate, I've never been a registered Republican in my life. I was a registered Democrat all of my life uh, except for uh, a few years ago. Uh, and so I, I changed to an, uh, uh, an independent, if you will. Uh, but I know what both parties have to say about abortion. And uh, I want to read to you both parties' position on abortion. And I want you, as you listen to me, and I pray that you would look it up to see if I'm telling the truth. I want you to uh, allow the Spirit of the Lord to deal with you. And I don't want you to apply to this the one thing that doesn't require facts, that doesn't require truth, that doesn't require uh, uh, anything except it's just the way you feel. And that is your opinion. For some things, my friends, can't be left to opinion. Some positions we hold ought to be positions that are based and settled and grounded in truth and knowledge. As a matter of fact, for a thing to qualify as a true belief or true faith, faith and belief has to be based on something, something real, something true. Opinion does not. So, we could care less about each other's opinion. Let's look at the facts. You remember the old dragnet uh, show, Just the Facts, ma'am, Just the Facts. Well, here are the facts. I'm going to read a portion of the Democrat Party's platform on abortion. It says, we believe unequivocally that every woman should have access to quality reproductive health care services, including safe and legal abortion, regardless to where she lives, how much money she makes, or how she is insured. We believe that reproductive health is core to women's men's and young people's health and well-being. We will continue to stand up to Republican efforts to defund Planned Parenthood centers which provide critical health care services to millions of people. We will continue to oppose and seek to overturn federal and state laws and policies that impede a woman's access to abortion, including by repealing the Hyde Amendment. Now, this is a portion of their position, that they will oppose Republican efforts to defund Planned Parenthood, that they believe in the uh, reproductive health care uh, rights of, of, of women, and so this is their stated position. I'll be honest with you, the way they feel about the abortion procedure is the way I feel about that which is being aborted. I feel that we should resist you know, all efforts and, and, and try to save that human life. But let me read the Democrat, uh, the Republican position, and uh, just a portion of it, and, and you're smart, you're going to go online, you're going to Google it, you're going to read the whole thing, and, and you'll decide. The Republican platform position. And this is a 2016 platform position with the Democrats, 2016 platform positions with the Republicans. Accordingly, we assert the sanctity of human life and reaffirm that the unborn child has a fundamental right which cannot be infringed. We support a human life amendment to the Constitution and legislation to make clear that the 14th Amendment's protection apply to children before birth. We oppose the use of public funds to perform or promote abortion or to fund organizations like Planned Parenthood so long as they provide or refer 
for elective abortions or sell fetal body parts rather than provide health care. We call on Congress to ban the practice of misleading women on so-called fetal harvesting consent forms, a fact revealed by a 2015 investigation. We will not fund or subsidize health care that include abortion coverage. Now, if you're African American out there and you're watching this, or if you're not, because I find that many of the people, as a matter of fact, most of the people that I work with who fight for the lives of the unborn babies are not African Americans, even though abortion disproportionately affects us. Will you explain to me, my friends, how 8% of the population, our lovely black women, are responsible for almost 40% of the nation's abortions? It is said and it is true that if African Americans just quit performing abortions, the abortion industry would go out of business. And this was spoken by no, no less than Miss Alveda King. And you saw her on the, the last uh, uh, presentation that we gave. She's a fearless fighter for the rights of the unborn. And Mrs. King, uh, Miss Alveda, uh, the, that great preacher you saw on the video, myself and others, we're not just fighting for black babies to live. We believe in the sanctity of human life. So even though I said to you it's, it's not a Republican issue or a Democrat issue, the truth is that the, the two parties have a pronounced difference on this issue. I'll close by reading a quote from a man who himself uh, uh, hated abortions, was against abortions because his mother was going to abort him according to his own words, but it was his grandmother who interceded and she convinced his mama to give birth to him. He says, I'm conceding that unless we put human life second only to God in our lives, we're becoming a Sodom and Gomorrah. We have an obligation to take sex and life as a far more sacred event than we do. My friends, the Reverend Jesse Jackson said this. Black militant spokesmen from black nationalist groups and the black Muslims denounce family planning and abortion as black genocide. I agree with them. Leaders like Julius Lester, Dick Gregory, Daniel H. Watts, H. Rap Brown called upon blacks to continue to reproduce in order to avoid race suicide. Listen to this, and I'll close. Quote, birth control as a national policy will simply marshal sophisticated methods to remove and control when not remove the weak, the poor, quite likely the black and other minorities whose relative increase in population threatens the white caste in this nation. Contraceptives will become a form of drug warfare against the helpless in this nation. Those who we could not get rid of in the rice paddies of Vietnam, we now propose to exterminate, if necessary, eliminate, if possible, in the OB wards and the gynecology clinics in our hospitals. My friends, these words were spoken by the Reverend Jesse Jackson in 1971. In, 70, in 73, he said, in jet, abortion is genocide. Now, uh, my friends, these I have, and I've talked to you about this before, how this man over and over spake against abortion until 1983-84 when he ran for the office of the presidency of the United States as a Democrat. To get their money, he could not speak against abortion. In 1984, he changed. He says, I chose to put my emphasis on sex education and self-discipline before the fact I would never encourage abortion except under medically 
uh, uh, circumstances, and then he goes on to become by 88, he says openly, so he gets up openly in uh, 1988 on July the 4th, and he supports abortion as a woman's choice. Now the question is, what, what changed? The procedure didn't change. The effect that it's having on blacks hasn't changed. Perhaps maybe, just maybe, just think about this before you turn me off. Perhaps maybe it's the effect of our friends on us. Those who love us. Those who are accepting, who believe in diversity, who is the party of mercy, the Democrats. You know, the other day someone called the Republican Party the party of death. Well, according to their platform, it's a party of life. So I just wanted to bring these things to you and uh, let it be food for thought. Now, I'm getting ready to go and have church this morning. Uh, but think about these things. Talk about these things. Uh, the buzzword now is we need to have a conversation. Well, don't you think by now it's time to have a conversation uh, as to why is it that a, a people who vote 90 plus percent of the time one way. We are soul out, soul, we're, we're loyal to a party that has in its platform our extermination. You've got to ask yourself, does this make sense? You've got to at least, we got to at least rise up against that party and say, change your platform or we're going to we, we, we're gone and if we don't go Republican we're going to go independent but you're not going to have our vote and promote policies that kill us so I love you wouldn't why talk about this stuff why even bring it up man why what's the point well you know the point I'm a black guy I'm a preacher I believe that we should be born I believe that human life is sacred. I believe that even poor black kids, you know, the, the, the Democrat Party says they're fighting the, the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment keeps Medicaid from paying for abortions. It keeps poor blacks from being aborted. Patrick Wooden believes that whether you're rich or poor, you, you can be poor, black, born in a shanty. Oh, your, your mom on welfare. Your, your daddy not there. You, you're just at the bottom. But I still believe that you have a right to be born. That's why I do this. Thanks. Have a good Lord's Day.